What up, though? Milwaukee's Rhythm Podcast. Mr. Unpopular Opinion. Story of Milwaukee's Realest Podcast. I'm joined by two podcasters, two A mics. So if it gets a little sketchy with the talking, y'all know we just passionate about what we do. Um, <laughs> go ahead, right to my right. Man, you know what's going on, man. It's your boy Slick Talk with Scales in the building, man. Y'all know what the fuck. Here right? to talk my Slick Talk one time. And then all the way from Houston, Texas, we got my brother. Man, ladies and gentlemen, it's the original ego and opinion. Don Weave, um, host of Dad Demo Pod. Gentlemen, what's happening? So now, before we get started, um, and get my brothers a flowers, and one scale, scales. Uh, oh, wait, what? Cal, ain't you in Vegas? <laughs> um, my brother Scales, um, I met him when he was doing uh his first podcast. Uh. Smoking, smoking gossip, gossip yes, and now right. he's moved on like David Ruffin did, you know. <laughs> he got his own thing going with Slick Talk Skills. Y'all make sure y'all check that podcast up. Every you, Tuesday and Thursday, man, 6 p.m. ish. You never ish. know. Never Key know who's going to stop through. Yeah, you never know what's going on on there. Yeah. We wild. And then much like uh, Skills did, Weave, I met him when he was doing Egos and Opinions, and he became like David Ruffin and went and started the Dad Demo <laughs> podcast. Y'all make sure y'all go check that out, too. Um, both of them dope podcasts. I listen Facts. to both of them. I follow both of them. Make sure y'all go and check my boys out. Um, no, I came back this morning. How was we supposed to know now? Facts. As you see, the ladies aren't in the studio. Uh, <laughs> we had to change the recording date to make sure that we could all meet up at the same time. I was under the assumption that Kayla was in still in Vegas because she travels all the time. She's back. So my apologies to Kayla. I don't even know if I text Amber, so I'm gonna be in trouble next episode. It ain't your fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It, it ain't, ain't my fault. fault. You know, no ma'am. That's how we do it. Hey, nigga, nigga, day uh, uh, <laughs> last Thursday. <Saturday. laughs> nigga, nigga, day. Uh, it slide over here too. Yeah, Meg, Meg the Stallion gave us a nigga, nigga, day <laughs> last Thursday. Sheree wasn't in the building, so oh, okay. Yeah, all niggas, we talked hip hop for two <laughs> hours. You know what I'm saying? And ironically, that's what we're getting ready to do. It's gonna be you know a couple um <laughs> underlying you know topics, but. Uh, for one, I want to ask both of y'all how y'all been doing. What's you know, I haven't seen you in a while. I, I'm I've been busy. Like I said, the pod, like you said, the pod is growing. We on episode 110 now, so you know what I'm saying. I think well, we do 111 tomorrow, right? Ken? Yeah, we do 111 tomorrow. So it's been keeping me busy. We running commercials, ads. We got sponsors. I got it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's grown and it, the baby has gotten very big. It's starting to walk now. There you, you know go. what I'm saying? So I got to do different dad shit. No pun intended, <laughs> but I got to do different dad shit now for it. But it keeps me busy, so you know I appreciate it. So that's really been about it. I've been trying to make sure I keep my my feet on the neck of that. I don't want to let up on it. You know what I'm saying? People nah. fucking with it, so I want to make sure I continue to get them content and shit that they like. You know what I mean? There you go. It's all about consistency. Facts. Weave, what's been going on with you? Man, being a pops, you know, um, I'm back in the lab actually working on my first production effort. Um, that'll be dropping top of the year. Can you hear me? Hear me up a little bit. Oh, we can't. We, you talking? We yeah. can hear no, you. I'm hear loud. I'm on our end. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. But yeah, no, I've been. Um, you know, I'm back in the lab. You know, I have a um, production effort that I'm cooking up. Um, that'll be coming top of 2020. What is this? 2022. So, um, you know, putting my time and effort into that. You know, doing dad demo when I can and. You know, just kicking back, being a parent, you know, the kids getting older, requiring more of my attention. Um, you know, my, my fiance's patience is thinner. So, you know, I got to be a man of many different hats nowadays. So, uh, you know, but life is good, man. No complaints. All right. That's dope. That's dope. Um, before we get into what we came to talk about, uh, which I'm excited to talk about this topic, uh, me and Skills have done it before, and I'm really excited because Weave is with us. Um one bonus topic we just gonna get over because um it wouldn't be right i guess if we didn't address it um r kelly has now <laughs> been sentenced well f convicted and is wait awaiting sentencing for um the crimes of the man act 
uh, trafficking, um, racketeering. racketeering. Um, it took the jury a little longer than I like to deliberate, and I'm just going to guess <laughs> and speculate because it was so of the racketeering charges. and the racketeering. It because was so the racketeering many is, is is tricky. Tricky facts. That means he's <laughs> got to be the head of a criminal organization, right. Right. and I didn't think they was going to get him on that. Right. But see, I feel like that opens the door for like an appeal. Like I don't believe these are the charges that stick. Like there's I, not the racketeering. When the other ones, I can believe. Um, for those. Um, that aren't clear that are probably listening to man act is just simply um, something that was put in place uh, back in the late 1800s. That means you can't transport women across state lines for the purpose of um, uh, anything immoral, uh, a debauchery or uh, uh, sexual exploitation. That's just what the man act covers. So I think he's gotten, he, he did those things, but racketeering, it mean he was giving them girls off to people in my opinion. So the thing that I, I took it was I had a cousin that fought a Rico Fed case, drug case, a couple years ago and lost, of course, because nobody really beats the feds. But I learned a lot of stipulations about how the law work. He he got, you know, he learned his law shit while he was in prison. He just so he could watch his attorney while he was fighting, you know, trying to appeal this situation. Most, most convicts do, yeah. So what I learned was is that everybody that hustled with him. The way they was able to get a racketeering charge, Rico charge on my cousin is, is that to keep them out of prison or to give them lesser sentences, they all turned on him. Mm -hmm. So then that's how he did that. So and, and when I looked up the R. Kelly shit, uh, maids, delivery guys, bodyguards, other songwriters, other producers, beat makers all testified against him for clemency with the fed so then they can get r kelly as the big fish see they do that in drug cases a lot that's what six nine just did to them niggas a couple of years ago yeah. like that's what they do in big drug cases if they want me they'll give y'all clemency just to get me because i'm the real big fish you know what i'm saying but then my question then would be because you know to... what you know what happened so you guilty nigga you was there when he did this with this child nah, you're aiding man. and abetting you're guilty fam we got footage testimony I, I recordings digress. Hey, you was there, boss. I so if you don't cooperate with us, you can go to jail with this nigga. And most of them people ain't going to jail with that nigga. Remember, they froze his money up so he yeah. couldn't keep paying nigga. People, they, he was threatening witnesses. He was doing all kind of reckless shit. So I knew he was going to be found guilty on all of that shit because he was doing too much. Well, up until you just said that, I never thought the racketeering charge was going to stick. And I, that's why I thought the jury was held He's going to Like we said, he's going to get a chance at appeal, though, because of how wild that racketeering case is because it's not like selling dope. It's mm -hmm. like you said, it's like he had to literally be handing you a young girl. Like, here you go, dog. Like, and I, it's going to be tough to prove that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But but see, that that's my problem with, like, the legal system, right? And, of course, we could talk about this all day. But at any point that anyone is connected, boil all of these motherfuckers. Boil them. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's rid everybody. There should not be a, any type of outs for anybody. That's the problem because now all we're doing is sending those people that were aiding and abetting right back out into the street just to turn the blind eye to some other bullshit. Or to continue their behaviors because who's to say they weren't doing that shit with Kells on their own? They could be That's just what I'm saying. What he was. You know what I'm saying? Them old niggas he was had around him, they could have been just what he was on. You know what I'm saying? Man. That's true. I mean, they, they, they got him, but at the end of the day, if if let's just say in hypothetics, he had beat New York. He still had to go directly to Illinois, and, and then after and Illinois, Minnesota. he got to go to Minnesota. Minnesota yeah. So everybody, every state wasn't gonna let him up. Y'all didn't I mean, I get it, but when you have that type of money, um, man, there's things that can be done, bro. Like we we've seen it, you know. And this again, the justice system is flawed. You know, they're gonna get who they want to get, but sometimes we got to go back to medieval days, cut niggas' dicks off, boil them. And be done. Yeah. <laughs> Send a strong message and end it. End it. And this is why I can't, like, I, I'm losing, I'm slowly losing respect for capers of the music. It's so we we can detach. This music is it's great music, but it's not that to where we can't let it go. Yeah, on, on my on my pod yesterday, we debated the subject matter. Yeah, it's different. Like if his subject matter wasn't the way it was, then it would be easier to. Be like, ah, maybe we could keep listening to this. But the subject matter, along with the atrocities and things that he, the crimes that he committed, is just too much. It's like a slap in the face to me. It reminds me, I played the Huey from the Boondocks clip on my pod yesterday, and it resonates again. Like, yo, 
every nigga that get in trouble ain't Martin Luther King. Like, we got to stop. Ain't Nelson Mandela. We got to stop doing that shit. Like, just because you like this nigga's music does not make him not guilty. Like, he did that well, shit. Well, like, well, see, that, that that part is right. But I don't know. It's, it, it's for not them sickos you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about for the people that still say, okay, I'm going to still, you know, jam the R. Kelly or whatever. I'm pro choice. If you want to do it, fine. As long as you're not screaming the nigga innocence and you, cool yeah, with that, that shit, fact I don't have a problem jail, with either. Yeah, then cool. But if you want to listen to his music, that's your business. But like you know, we did the research, saying. he ain't on no curated playlist anymore. So if you go look for his music, you're typing his name in and going to listen to it. So you ain't saying it's just coming on by accident. But if that's your choice, that's your choice. I mean, that's just yeah. the thing, you know, like. Up until this conviction, what was it? Two, three weeks ago, I was in some boys. And they were playing um, I mean, happy we, people. I mean, I do an R&B. I'm not going to get appalled by it because I feel in my heart of hearts, there's a whole list of motherfuckers that just ain't got caught. That's just as sick that I don't know nothing about. I mean, but I when it comes, up, it's motherfuckers in these people family. Yeah. yeah they I mean, be, they I, be crucified, am, am, am I canceling <laughs> this ca catalog? I'm not going to go looking for it. But if it's being played, played I'm not going to like walk out the bar. Right. Man, like, oh, no. It takes way more energy to do all that. Yeah, I think I mean, that, like, that's that's an extreme. I gotta cancel out damn they're like Russell Simmons. I gotta cancel out everything yeah. from Def Jam produced yeah, exactly. by him and shit. Exactly. And that's a long fucking list. Yeah, exactly. You nah, but see, I think I think, I think that's a false uh, <laughs> crank weave up a little more for me, please. Yeah, I, I think that's a false parallel because again, this music is rooted in this behavior. Now, okay, I can understand. Yeah, we could maybe let I believe I can fly, slide, or step in the name of love. I'm the world's but, greatest. Yeah, but we I'm coming to the spot scales, and this is all due respect. But if I walk into the joint and seems like you're ready, it's bumping. Damn, you know <laughs> well, what I'm saying? Like, that's, bro, that's different. That's that's different because those songs right there. See, but I that's mean, what certain, I'm saying. Certain songs but that's what I was saying. It's triggers. the content. Yeah. It's the content. Certain this songs guy's are triggered. content. Uh, an example AJ I, number the number. I'm not listening to that shit. An example I brought up was that Ike Turner. Like, I make a lot of Ike Turner jokes, but Ike Turner is really like a goat to me because he's one of the greatest American songwriters in history. Yeah, Fact, fucked up that he was a woman beater and shit and abuser and shit. That's fucked up. But at the same time, he didn't write songs about beating Tina's ass. So I can still listen to Ike's catalog when it comes on, or I watch a documentary, or I watch the movie and not be turned off. I can praise his music still. His, on the other hand, like, yeah, it's different. Yeah, if you're 18, different. I need to see your ID. If you're 16, we're going to let you slide. Like, he's singing this shit in songs. Like, it's kind of like, I'm the Pied Piper and like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? You know what I'm and saying? But see, like, that's, that's when you get to a level of being untouchable. And you start playing in motherfuckers' faces. But, 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 yeah, he uh, played in our face totally. Just, especially and with that's my problem. With that's my problem. Face. I do have one question, though, for both of y'all. Any Either one of y'all that want to answer, answer. Um... A previous up until this this whole stint where R. Kelly last year getting arrested and them really putting the hooks to him. Twenty years ago, we knew this nigga was sick. Facts. Fifteen mm -hmm. years ago, uh, when the shaft dropped and he put out the song "Bad Man," he told you everything in that song that he was, and he told you he wasn't ashamed of who he was. He was fucked up. He wasn't a good person. So if we saw video ocular proof. <laughs> Of what he did 20 years ago, five years ago, he confesses on, on, on wax. Why is the big outrage now that he gets arrested? That well, was the only question with all of this. You can't. Because I had already said the nigga deemed the nigga sick. And, yeah, you know, me all too, that. a long time ago. Like when him and Ho fell out during the Best of Both Worlds tour and all that type of shit, I kind of I kind of mailed it in it's, on R. Kelly at that point. And it's been a lot of speculations about that. In my heart of hearts, I believe that somebody from Hove Camp saw something they wasn't supposed to see. That's why the scuffle. Because I had I won tickets from Reggie Brown. Come on, man! I put up. You saw my stat the other day. I was mm. salty, bro. I'm talking about. I almost cried, nigga. I had uh, I, had <laughs> I was sick. One ticket. I remember from that. Brown and picked them up, and they canceled that shit. The day before. Bro, their tour buses were here. I saw the Rockefeller bus downtown, nigga. Do you know how excited I was? Like, I think you hit it on the head. I think something did happen. No, no, right Ty Ty, one believe. of them niggas saw something they wasn't supposed to see, boss. This nigga, this nigga R. Kelly wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Somebody in the Leah camp pulled Dan Coattail or something to some shit that wasn't supposed to be going on, bro. And once they got to Jay, Jay pulled, Jay confronted him about it, and R. Kelly didn't like that shit. You know what I'm saying? And everything went left from there. Now, I, I thought that years ago, though. 
But see, that's because I've been thought he was a sicko. I got people from Chicago who have been telling me he had been fucking little girls before the tape came out. Because I got people that's on the turf and the shy that grew up with R. Kelly and went to high school with him, know his brothers and shit, sister, you know what I'm saying? No, he was raped as a child. I knew that years ago before that became public knowledge. Mm. I knew that when he was a star, when I was still a fan of him. I knew somebody had fucked with him and his brothers when they was kids. You know what I'm saying? But that still doesn't excuse his behavior. No, it don't. You see what I'm saying? People coming up with Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay, they're all sickos too. R. Kelly goes in a sicko bag with them. Like, why are you giving me this excuse because on my R. Kelly post today? Like, I say R. Kelly ain't shitting and your rebuttal to me is, well, Elvis Presley married. I don't give a fuck what Elvis Presley did. Fuck Elvis Presley. Because people need something. (laughs) People need stuff to argue about. I had this conversation with Weave before. When you get to social media and the reason... You know, I, I, you, we get labeled trolls is because we put up statuses and people feel obligated to comment. You don't, you don't, you don't have, have to, to agree with me. You don't have to agree. You don't have to disagree. You could keep scrolling, but they need it. Some in their day isn't going right. So they're trying to put, you know, energy can't be created or destroyed. It's got to be transferred. Facts. So they Facts. got to come to you with all this dumb, dumb logic. Shit don't dumb make logic. no sense. It all is just. I argue. seen males and females giving very dumb logic. I seen a lot of dudes that I'm side eyeing right now, niggas with daughters and shit. Like, bro, what are you talking about right now, my nigga? Like, fuck the internet. Like, sometimes we just gotta be 100 about what's going on. Like, I got 11 year old daughter. I don't think that R. Kelly shit is coy or cool or light or none of that. I think that's heavy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not on that type of time at all with nobody's daughter, including mine. You know what I'm saying? Like. When niggas so, scream at tech black women shit, I'm really screaming at with children, bro. I work in the education system. Like, I'm not on none of that type of shit, bro. Like, I can't go sign that behavior just because I like a nigga music. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's wild. They even think grown to, adult people are thinking like that. Like to, to bring it back to, to Tori's original question: 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. Um, you we have to respect like the growth, development, and maturation. You know, a lot of us weren't parents 20 years ago. We weren't, you know, like, so like living it now, some of that shit hits differently. You know what I'm saying? Some things kind of just kind of go by, you know, because again, rape culture in the black community is a very touchy topic. And there's a lot of things that, you know, we just let slide, right? For instance, right? You'll see a little girl and her grandma will get on her ass for how she's sitting on the couch. Girl, close your legs, right? And we're policing her because of the predators right. that might be looking in the area that they're not supposed to be looking at. So instead of dealing with that issue head on, we put the onus on the daughter for she's not thinking nothing like that. Exactly. She's sitting comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the appropriate Indian style is what I was going to say, but nowadays you get canceled for everything. But, you know, like shit's different nowadays. So like we're a bit, we're a lot more enlightened. So yes, we're we're perfectly fine to be outraged now because I go downstairs and I got a I got a one year old daughter. It's different. My nieces are 14, 15, exactly. 16 years old. So now I'm looking at them directly. See, I was 18 in college, and it was the dumbest shit in the world for them to put the responsibility on me to decide what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So now as this 18 year old kid who is only in college to party, have sex and do drugs, yeah. I got to figure out what I want to do in my 30s. What did I go down there for to be a lawyer? And why did I leave? Because I didn't want to go to school that long. But what did I end up doing when I was 21, 22? I took my ass back to school. You see what I'm saying? So it's like experience, bro. That changes the game. So people are perfectly fine being outraged today. It's nothing wrong with that. We are different people. Now it we're war when it when it when the when the when the tape came out. Yeah, when the tape with, with the little no, girl when child when child pornography, yeah, when child was pornography being passed and, around yeah, and passed we were around. watching it yeah. in barber shops. Yeah, yeah. Shit that we can go to jail for now. Today, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, technically yeah. Oh. we could have went to jail for it then, but I guess things, you know, some well, as time goes on, things are less socially acceptable. It was just as wrong then as it is now. Yes, right. no, 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 yeah, yeah absolutely. There wasn't any awareness, so you can go into the barbershop mm-hmm. and niggas was watching the video. You might go to your parents' basement and they around, like, yo, did y'all see this shit? And it's child pornography. Facts, they won't admit that now because they're they're they're, they're more aware, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's just education and growth, that's it. 
So it's perfectly fine to continue to be outraged. I hate the 2015 five year argument is bullshit because I'm not that same person. Well, see, that's not an argument. That's more of a question. That's more of a question on everybody's opinions as to why 20 years ago this he wasn't nailed to the cross the way he should have been. Steven said in the comments the outrage is because he finally out of legal moves to stay out of prison. He's going for real this time. So that's where the outrage is coming Ooh, from. So oh, well, yeah. 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 Well, time. yeah. Honestly, I, like I was just saying, and maybe Steven didn't hear, I honestly thought he was going to get off on the racketeering. I couldn't picture it in my head how you can come up with a, 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 a solid racketeering charge. I mean, you, 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 know, you shed light on yeah. it, but I just when I'm watching it, I'm like, what's taking so the jury so So if you so a long? shrewd criminal, you might have ducked those charges. But R. Kelly was bribing witnesses. You know what I'm saying? He was doing a lot of reckless shit leading up to this verdict. So all of that goes into the jury room, too. Like, even any benefit of the doubt they had, you lose that when you badgering witnesses. See, like, why are you doing it, that to witnesses if you ain't did nothing, nigga? I'm not disagreeing with you. No, no, it's, no it's I know you're not. It's the not. time, though. Yeah. It's the time that we're in. You would have expected this jury to baby four hours max, and they would have came out guilty on everything. They went home over no, the weekend. No, they went home over the weekend. To come yeah. back to deliberate some more. But see, sometimes it's kind of like with work, right? When I used to, you know, do IT ticketing, right? Yes, we can knock all these tickets out right then and there. But that only sets the expectation that we could work this fast in the future. So we don't, <laughs> let, it, we don't let it marinate. Let that yeah, we're going to milk this. We Have milk you ever it. been on jury duty? That shit ain't fun. You want to get that shit over as quickly as possible. That That ain't no high profile, glamorous shit. If I'm in the jury room, I'm like, look, we know this nigga guilty. Everything's been lined up. Sign the paper so we can get the fuck out of here. But y'all do remember before all this shit that there was a lot of uh, cover up and lack of coming forthcoming facts. with a lot of the facts. facts. Like, some people were covering shit up. They were actually uh, uh, siding with him, saying yeah. that he, you know he didn't kidnap me. I mean, they were. It was it was messy, and he was feeling indestructible you know what i mean like he didn't, he didn't well really... yeah that i mean that was at the beginning so i right. agree with you on right that because that could play a part then, in the but, jury so room. Then, and, and it died until that that documentary came out and then it popped back up so again. then the defense in this right so the reason he got banked is because the me too movement is very very powerful right now the me too movement has more power and money than r kelly mm -hmm. in today's time if the Me Too movement would have been around in the first case, he'd have went to jail. He wouldn't have beat that case either. Even if that girl got on stand and said, no, that's not me on the tape, they'd have found a way to lock his ass up regardless. They'd have, they have bribed her. Yeah, they'd have bribed her. her. They'd have made sure that she convicted that nigga that day. So now the tables are turned. Like we've said, we maturation. Um, things are less taboo as they were then. You see what I'm saying? You wouldn't dare watch child porn back then it was like a 50 50 chance that you would laugh at it and make fun of it in today's time us four men sitting here right now wouldn't giggle at that shit you see what i'm saying but 15 20 years ago i might have giggled at that because i didn't have a child it wasn't that serious to me like the way it got introduced to me was in a funny way it wasn't in a serious way can like you describing the surviving r kelly shit was brought to us in a serious way it's in the horror section on netflix <laughs> no, seriously, go look it up. It's in the horror section on Yo, that. Yo, that's crazy. That so that's what crazy. I'm saying. It was presented to us like, huh. Even when you look at the, the way Lifetime advertised it, it was like a horror film. It wasn't like a praise what thing or that? even like what a documentary. Said? You said that last night, marketing. It was marketed. Marketing. It was marketed to us like, man, you better be scared of R. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? Like, he coming to get your daughter. Mm -hmm. That's how it was brought to us. So it made a nigga like me on high alert, like, I already was on high alert with this nigga. Now I got actual footage and testimonies. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like a fed, like the defense, like we come after this nigga, freeze all his assets. They can't pay nobody. Make sure Arista or Jive, whoever owns the rights to his music can continue to get paid, but we're going to freeze him from any public sectors, curated playlists, vibe, uh, smooth R&B on Pandora. Y'all bet not put that shit in the playlist or we coming after y'all. See, they don't want the pressure of the Me Too movement. Nobody does. So then you disassociate yourself from R. Kelly. And then that's how you attack from the outside. And they got all the way to the inner circle to where his right hand men were like, no, we'll turn testimony against this nigga. We done. Like, he ain't got no more money to give me. Oh, I'm um, yeah. done. Like, Scary. I'm not going to, to the feds for this. You know what I'm saying? And some of the niggas knew half the story of what was going on, too. And the shit, the real shit come out like that nigga was that's what he was doing. Come on, shit? man. Oh shit. That mean that this was happening, this was happening. So when does this pressure get applied to Nicki Minaj? That's what I'm trying to figure out. 
I've been trying to figure it out that out since yesterday. I, the, I had the, pressure for her when she put the shit up for her brother. The problem with I think right now for Nicki Minaj is you got to break that defense. You know, just like if you were playing football, you got to get through that wall first. And the wall is always going to be the barbs. You know, I've always said, fan, as far as fan bases go, top five, worst fan bases, number two got to be the barbs. Number one going to be the beehive. beehive yeah. And then number three going to be the, what they call them, Swifties, Taylor Swift's, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> what you call it. But them them three, but the um, even with the shit that happened with the whole vaccine thing, they are going to go to war over Nikki. So you got to break their defense first. I mean, she's got when you when you that powerful to have twenty million people follow you on Instagram, another thirty on Twitter. It's not going to be easy to just say, "Hey, you paid the legal fees for your brother who was and your husband, yeah, who was yeah, messing with women." We just saw a video of um, a victim discussing being bribed. Bribed, right, yeah. And it's gone. Not the video itself, but no, it's gone off of social media. Yeah, it's yes. gone off of trending topics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a trending topic. That didn't really get no legs. I was wondering why that didn't get no legs that day. Nobody was really talking about that shit. You know, but the barbs aren't about to play about Nikki, and you know, as fucked up as it is, and I think she's sick herself too. You know, as a woman. You know, hiding this shit and, and and okaying this shit and marrying into some shit and bribing women. Yeah, I mean, it just don't make like... sense to be a woman to do that shit. But right now, I hate to say it, but Nikki is what R. Kelly used to be. So you're yeah, you're yeah, telling me that she pulling the same man. The Me Too movement has been infiltrated by the barbs. Yeah, the Me Too movement could very well, you know, like I, like I tell people all the time. It wasn't only white pe- white faces up under them Ku Klux Klan hoods. Yes, you know, yes, sometimes yes. the people that you think, you know, is riding with you was there to just find out what's going on and what your next move is. Mm. Me too. Yeah, they're powerful. LBGT is too. Ooh, yeah. But how many barbs are in the LBGT? Nikki's got a huge <laughs> like, uh, gay fan base. <laughs> huge That's gay real shit. Fan. That's real shit. Yeah, she do. But... Uh, all right, we'll sum it up that R. Kelly going to jail. Um, it's these charges alone that he faced in New York. He ain't he ain't coming back. Well, if home. he get booked on one of them, yeah. he could get all oh, they could throw all 16 out. If they book him on one, he's cooked, bro. Like these charges ain't no joke. And I he's still facing up. charges in two other states. Yeah. And then that's why they pushed out sentencing to May 2nd, I believe, yep. because they want to see what happens in Illinois and what happens in Minnesota. So bye bye to kills. Peace. But Man. uh moving on. Right now, um, I, it's my pleasure. Uh, this is part two, actually. Uh, me and Scale sat down along with uh, Teasy of the Teasy Talks podcast. Shout out to her. Um, and we added Weave into this conversation. It's a music conversation that we're having about something that I love called Versus Versus TV. Um, that streams on uh, what was it Apple Music? We got the replay on title. We have uh. Triller and Triller is the app that it comes off. Of. Triller and uh Instagram, Instagram Live. Um, this is something for y'all that's been living under the rock basically on uh March 24, 2020, during the lockdown, during the height of um our fears about COVID and and what was to become. Um to a certain degree, most of us were saved. We were saved in the sense that we were entertained between uh um, two legendary music producers, Timberland and Swiss Beats, um, when they begin to battle each other. Um, this has been nothing short of amazing. I can't think of anything um, that has grown faster. I can't think of any other example of black excellence that has reached the height it has. Um, this started off as just an Instagram live, something I could do with skills right now, um, going back and forth, for much like we're doing right now with Weave, They've turned this into a multi-million dollar enterprise. Multiple sponsors, uh, multiple supporters. Bigger artists joining the platform now. Instagram, um, breaking the Instagram live records with uh, 750,000 at one time. We've seen faces like Erica Badu, Patti LaBelle, um, legendary Gladys Knight. We've seen Our some of our favorite fire. some of our favorite R&B um, artists. Uh, you know, when we saw groups like 112 and um, Jagged Edge go against each other or when we saw 
a legendary Bobby Brown go versus um Keith Sweat. Oh, you know, we've seen some of our favorite hip hop artists, so you know, the ones that are commercial and the ones that are grimy. We saw Gucci versus um Jeezy. We saw uh um Nelly versus Ludacris. Uh we've seen legendary producers. It's transcended. We've got the reggae section, we've had the R and B section, we have the smooth uh um, the smooth lover section, the hardcore rap section. It's been just amazing. But right now, it's a year later, and we're coming back to talk about verses. Um, first off and foremost, I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with Weave. To date, what has been your favorite versus battle? My personal favorite um, is probably Kissing Fab. I think, um, Fab. yeah, you know, uh, only because... Again, so when when we have these match out matchups come up, I go right to the playlist, right? So I call Kiss out the gate, and I'm met with so much resistance. It's oh, Fab has the soul tape, man. The has, the internet, hey, I was one of them. The I'm not gonna gave, lie. I the mean, internet gave it to Fab as soon as the flyer went up. Damn, like, damn, I did and, too. I'm and not that's what lie. makes it that's what makes it memorable for me because now you have to hear my mouth, you know. And when I tell you. First off, let's just give Jada Kiss his flowers real quick because, of course, we're going to talk about dip setting the locks. But, um, <laughs> he put on a master class, you know, like he, you know, listening to the conversation that he had with Joe Button leading up to the verses and how he was like strategically planning and had counters for what Fab was going to do. Like, it was a different level. It was a different level. This is that's what I do to niggas that try to battle me in music shits. Like, Tay, stop running from skills. <laughs> I gotta put that. Tay, stop running from skills. We're not gonna have that. But Thanks. um, yeah, easily my favorite one, bro. Cause he just, you know, he set the tone and he started the, you know, dropping the lyrics and actually rapping over some of the records. Like it was a beautiful thing to see. And um, we learned that it's not just about like the star power of the records, you know, like hip hop at its core can win you around kiss was throwing out freestyles and you had to be from the line the line wire you know era to where we download these joints to really understand that's why i was talking to my partners in texas like yo y'all don't know i'm looking at your face when these records come on and y'all confused but you want to call out a winner cut it out Scales, what was it? What was it? I'm, I'm, I'm under the elk that he's under. It was a lot of them that I enjoyed. Like Too Short E40 was, I thought, was a very underrated one that was dope because it was just dope for the culture. Them niggas played thirty bangers for four hours on Instagram, and it, it made me appreciate because you know I'm from California originally, but it made me appreciate them niggas catalogs because I was taking them niggas for granted. So that's what Versus did for me with those guys. I also enjoyed Ghosts and Rays. Like it was, it was the ones that were more friendlier. I enjoyed, but my favorite is what Kiss did to the locks. Like, I mean, what Kiss did to Dipset. Like, that yeah. was my favorite because it. What he said, I'm a big fan of like smack battles, mm. and to me, Kiss took it back to the smack original. What hip hop battle KRS One dissing Queens Bridge. That's what Jada Kiss did to them niggas on a live platform in front of the world, though. Like. Not just in front of a few niggas and a couple couple bitches in the room. Like he did this in front of the entire world to a group that we think is phenomenal. You get what I'm saying? Like he didn't just dismantle some scrubs, he dismantled some niggas that we think is the shit. You get what I'm saying? So that I enjoyed that one the most. You know what I'm saying? Like that's my that's kiss is just my highlight. Real quick, scales. What part of Cali are you from? I'm from Oakland. Richmond, actually, but oh, it's considered Oakland. So, so when I when I mention names like Mac Dre, yeah, the Jacka, like yep. you, you, you know where? Okay, I'm cool. very, very adept to that. Yeah, yep. to the listeners, hey, Google those guys. Mac Dre, Mac Dre gave me a different appreciation for music itself and for artistry. Like phenomenal artists, you know. Rest in peace, to Jacka. Rest in peace to Dre, Keek. Like, yeah, you know, my roommate was from the Bay, so like, <laughs> I was flooded heavy with, you know. Vallejo, Richmond, the you know, yeah, but, the underground scene is crazy. Like between them and Texas, I don't know who's got a crazier underground scene. Like them niggas be millionaires, and you've never even heard of these guys before. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like facts. they be rich way before the record deal. You know what I'm saying? So, that, that's how I be feeling when I go down to Atlanta because there's so much fucking money down there, and, 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 and you don't know. And what's crazy about Atlanta is me being there in the early stages, like when BMF first, first got to Atlanta and shit. Mm -hmm. California and Texas brought that culture to Atlanta. Atlanta underground rap scene wasn't that 
potent. They got that culture from, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. Texas and California because them niggas started migrating there. You got to remember, Too Short moved to Atlanta in the early, mm-hmm. I mean, in the late 90s and mm-hmm. put out the Nationwide record. That's where we get Lil John from. Remember, remember them joints yeah. that he put out with the East Side Boys and shit? Too Short had moved to the A and put out a, started an independent label, and that's how we got to Lil John. You see what I'm saying? So he brought that underground shit. Like, yo, you can sell this shit out to Trump. And then Atlanta got just such a culture where they support their music that it just transferred over and it became it went together like seamlessly. I got to watch that shit happen like overnight. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I come from somewhere where that wasn't happening. Which with has music. transferred <laughs> Atlanta into the hub of damn near hip hop now. Exactly. Like I've said, I think the last time we were talking, you know, New York still gets the credit. Hey, you know, they brought that up because uh, academics asked 21 Savage that on his show the other day. What? Who would win the versus battle between New York and Atlanta? And I told you, I'm like, New York has been getting a pass for years because they are in New York. I truly feel the music is lying in the South at this point in time. I just, you know, like, if wait, you, wait, wait. what are we saying? If you even told look, us you look did at a wave. Look at wave. Huh? What you say? <laughs> New York wait. do get a pass because it's New York. The no, biggest part of thing out of New York are people you wouldn't even play right now. Which is fine, but what are you about? What are you trying to say there? <laughs> oh, what I'm saying is if New York and Atlanta went up into a battle, when we're talking about current artists right now, Atlanta will win. I mean, damn near old Atlanta might give them a run for their money. They wouldn't win, but they give them because you're talking about Big and Jay and all of them now. That wouldn't be fair at all, but Okay, so you, you you're splitting it current. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay, cool. I mean, I'll it let, wouldn't be fair. Okay, I'll let that slide, but his collectively Please, stop, yeah, it's not. stop it. No, 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 no. Not collectively. I okay. mean, you'd okay. be a fool to make that statement. No, I mean, it's I too much, you. too much legendary shit. But that's my problem because people are still basing that legendary shit in 2021, thinking that everything that flows through hip hop is still New York. New York gets a pass. People celebrate 50 Cent and all this other shit. I think he's a subpar rapper at best, but because he's from New York. And had a couple million albums. I mean, hell, Nelly did the same thing, and nobody even cares about the fucking shit Nelly sold. Well, which brings me to my favorite verses. Hold on one second before you rebuttal. My no, favorite yeah. verses was Ludacris and Nelly. That was your favorite. And it because okay. what you got from Jada Kiss, I think started with Ludacris. Oh, the, the programming. Yeah, the music having programming. a strategy having and having strategy. it mapped Absolutely. out. So Absolutely. he it, to me, Luda sat down. No, Luda and executed was like, flawlessly that, that night. I'm talking about flawlessly. I'm not even a ludicrous fan like that. He executed flawlessly that night. And but he used to be a radio DJ. So true. he knows about programming and shit. The nigga was on the radio when I was in college in Atlanta. He was Chris Lover Lover on the radio before he got his record deal. So the nigga knows about programming. He DJs parties and shit right now. So the nigga knows about programming. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, like oh, I've watched that, vet, you know, and the world that gave it to Nelly, and rightfully so. If you look at Nelly catalog, in, in two albums, he should have had enough to wipe Luda out. But it's what I be saying in verses when, when we debate on my show, because Don on my show mm-hmm. feels Mariah Carey can clean up Mary J. Blige, right? Never. So that's what we <laughs> debate on our show. It's it's not how big a record was that automatically wins around in the verses. It's about how it rings off in front of that that group of people it's just like the battle that you went to this weekend weave that's why yep. i think the smack battles in the versus shit are damn near you know what i mean they like parallel because big name people mm. mook and all these niggas we was waiting on that them niggas hit us with a won't 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 won. <laughs> they let us down but the unheard of or the niggas on the up they was body and shit. Every time I tapped in with Weave, he was talking about a new nigga or a nigga Cause, cause, cause that they, was on his way up. They were hungry. They were hungrier. So that's what I'm saying about this versus shit. It's different how that shit gonna ring off in the room. A lot of those meat, a lot of those mook lines might have been dope on a song, but in a battle format, them lines weren't landing. I watched him mm-hmm. shoot duds into the crowd to the point where I cut that shit off. I told my man, like, man, cut that shit off. I don't even want to watch Mook. He embarrassing himself right now. Yeah, no, that was my bathroom break. <laughs> Damn. Real talk, <laughs> you know, bullshit. No, no, not lying at all. When Mook we talk about Goaty, when I see him on the lineup, mm. that's the battle I'm looking for. Him and Rhea, that's the battle I'm looking for. That's the one I ex. Like, I gotta see that. And them niggas came out and hit me with the womp womp. Like, so that's what I'm saying. It's about how that shit ring off in the room, son. You know what I'm saying? I used to battle rap. You can go in there thinking like, oh yeah, I'm the nigga. I got the fan base, and bro got some shit for you on the other side of that mic when it's his go. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that ain't how, you know, and when you go in a battle, that's what a battle is. You know what I'm saying? That's just like a nigga lined up in, with Mike lined up in front of Ivo. Come on, man. You can get cooked. I don't give a fuck if you the best defender in this decade. He catch you leaning the wrong way. You cooked, boss. And, that's and, how this and, shit and go. I'm, I'm the young nigga. I'm hungry. I'm this. That's because that's why I'm going to That's how this shit go, brother. Give me Mike. If I'm going to be here, let's see how good I am. Drew Holiday, Devin Booker. <laughs> give me the ball, fam. <laughs> like, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's just how this shit go when we match up. On paper, nigga picking Devin Booker over Drew 100 times. But in that one play, who got it done? You see what I'm saying? That's what a battle is. I, I think that's what people forget because they get into their fan mode. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mary J affected people's lives with those records. And, like, and, got people through, like, rehabilitation, battered women and, through and shelters. And I want to be clear about something. When some though. of them songs come on, brother, yeah. Fan mode, there's nothing wrong with it. Because if there was no fan mode, then we wouldn't have these interesting conversations. Yeah, I, everybody would be leaning the same way. Yeah, but so when, we got to have a fan mode. We when, you get to, when you get to splitting hairs, though, that fan shit get a little tricky. You got you to be realistic and honest. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I don't understand why the Puff and JD conversation is a to that. Please, let's unwrap Well, you know what? That. I can give some context to that because it's shit I wanted to write on your status, but it would have been too long. No, we're going to do and, it right again, here. Yeah, we're we going to do it while we're talking. We're here. We here. You get to Puff and JD. And these are just my opinions. You don't got to agree with them. No, or no, we, this is what we're doing this for. Man, we don't need no disclaimers, man. Shoot that shit. Exactly. Okay, you got Puff and JD. Puff is calling out for Dre mm -hmm. and is kicking JD to the curb. Now, I agree with everybody in, in the sense of we know or it should not be a loss on Puffy because Puffy, on one hand, is top tier as far as music producers go. I don't even think there's a music producer that could do a versus with Puffy when you get to his catalog. But for the sake of having the verses with Puffy, the most logical choice is going to be JD. That's the only person that can go with him as far as R&B and um, old school and uh, somewhat somewhat within the last 10 years as far as music goes. See, JD, has legendary, JD has legendary songs just like Puffy does. The, the cheat code would be Mary J and, and, and Big, but he's not going to play. Nobody's going to play all of two artists for their verses. So that's not gonna happen. Why not? Right. Why not? I'm a biggie your head the fuck off. Oh yeah, I'm bigging you. And, and, and listen, see, see yeah, you, is, you might be right, but Puffy's not gonna do that. You know, why? you'd be kidding yourself if why you not? thought you Where would be kidding he? yourself if you thought he was gonna come and play 20 big songs. Do you think he's, that, okay. he's he's playing at least eight? Yeah, at minimum. And see, this I is don't the think I, no, I don't think because I, I got you know what somebody like big. I mean, Diddy is going to take that stage, and they're going to want to show their range as to what they produce. Bro, he playing at least eight Biggie records. Now, if they not just eight. eight, I'm talking about not eight singles, but at least eight with, records with, with Biggie, Biggie on, on them. Yes, okay, easily. That's, that's fine, but okay, you, you're calling out Dr. Dre. In my opinion, Dre's the easier win for you. Because Dre doesn't no. have a deep R&B bag. So, see, that's, all y'all going to do is, oh, hold, on, hold on, let me finish. All y'all going to do yeah. is exchange five tracks between Pac and Big and once that's done, you're going to smoke Dre. So you know what's fucked up about that, Tory? Dre don't even got five records that he produced for Pop. They only did two records together. Okay. They so hated each other's guts. Okay, so two and then three Snoop. Yeah, I think, fair, you, I, fair, I think Dre wants to go more Snoop in this battle. Like I'm, how I'm saying Puff's going to go very big. Dre's going to go very Snoop but in this I, battle. You think he's going to go very big? I don't. I think he's going to play big tracks. Don't get me wrong. That He would be stupid not to. I think he's going to play Mary J tracks. He oh, would be stupid not yeah, to. Mary J, I don't I think, think that's you, what he's going to just I think you get Mary to. J and Joe. This is like, you know, finding a trick in Mortal Kombat and just keep sweeping the whole fucking, you know, game. It's not showing, you know, that you can really play. It's just trying to get through it. If you're going to body J.D., thing. you're going to body J.D. on the R&B end. You're going to body him on the hip-hop end. It, you're going to show your range to do it. You're going to show why you're the greatest producer of all time. I don't you think don't, you, you don't have to show range. You don't have to show. See, if you pay attention, J.D. is trying to force this R&B angle because that's where he knows he stands a shot. Facts. J.D. Kiss just showed you I don't have to play your game. Play them R&B records, Fab. Play them radio records, Fab. I'm going to freestyle your head off. That's it. So, yes, I, I understand what you're saying with the R&B bag, but I look at this, look at it as highs and lows. 
Dre has more highs to match Puff's highs. Mm -hmm. JD doesn't have that. So when I start reeling off spades, what the fuck you going to throw at me? What are you going to throw at me? When I throw out Juicy or One More Chance, you what you going to burn? Some Usher? It's not going to hit the same. Now we're in a concert format. Fact. So it's even worse. When them 808 start banging, mm -hmm. shit's going to look a lot different. When I start dancing and being fly, it's going to be ugly. Ugly. And that's why Dr. Are you saying that Dre's going to dance with him or something? Because J.D. Not, could, but Dre's not. No, but Dre, Dre definitely it. have Snoop Dogg <laughs> and the West Coast niggas crip walking. I, 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 I get that. Come on, them niggas. Dub seeing Snoop coming right out there smoking weed. That, that's Dre why set, these conversations are, are important. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing these totally different than y'all two are seeing them. I'm seeing them as this is not fair. Oh, I mean, No, this is the path of least resistance. So this is my you, thing, you right? You get the marquee, you get the marketing, you get the East even, West, even, you get the legendary producers. But once, you know, Puffy does, because he will slide into that R&B bag, Dre is going, what, he got two tracks? That so this is this is where I, I I figured out the balance with what you're describing. Dre doesn't have a very deep R&B bag. We'll no, it's that. shallow at best. But I don't feel that Dre has to play any R&B. There you go. You see what I'm saying? Dre, Dre, Dre is one so of the you're, you're saying Dre is one of the few, Dre way. is one of the few producers in our genre of music that can go straight hip hop in the verses. I feel like if Kanye takes on niggas, he got to play some R and B. For real, got to play some R and B. It's a lot of producers. That nigga Dre, though, mm -mm, he ain't got to do that. NWA bad. That's what scares me for Puffy. What are we gonna do when he goes in the NWA Ice Cube Whoa. bag? That's Those a skills. bag. Like, I look, bro, I'm bad. Listen to me. I'm signed to bad boy. Puffy stole my money, all that shit. He owned my publishing. I am bad boy. <laughs> but what scares me in the Dre battle is I grew up on NWA. That was a nasty beast. That shit was. Eminem and all that 50 Cent shit is cool. NWA to Snoop Dogg, that run, yeesh. That's a nasty run in music, period. Like, fuck genre, hip hop. I'm talking about music, everyday music. Bro, you heard them songs everywhere you went. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I remember being a child in Milwaukee. I ain't even talking about in California, because of course we was going to hear it in California. I'm talking about in Wisconsin. I heard that shit everywhere I went, dog. Uh -huh. So that's why I'm, that's the only thing that scares me with Puff, because it's like he said, if we're in a concert format, do you want to play R&B versus Easy e Boys in the Hood? Like, you don't want to play R&B versus <laughs> You got to play Biggie and the locks and Black Rob and shit like well, that against see, that. See, the problem with that is now you shine now, and now, shit. Now you getting into who turn. I mean, whose round is it? You know, are you going first or am I going first? Because That's that plays a role in this shit too, though. Because te technically, the person that goes first is setting the tempo. But then we switch it ten, though. Yeah, we do. Switch and that's it. what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. This is now chess. Oh well, this yeah, it always chess. been. Yeah, bring that queen out there if you want to. You better protect her. And while you trying to protect her, I'm gonna eat your ass up with my rooks and my and my knights. You know what I'm saying? Like again, it's highs and lows. Facts. JD ain't got a nothing but a G thing. What the fuck is he gonna do with that? That's what I'm saying. That that's what that's what my thing with JD was. That's why I went on that rant. I went on that day and I was comparing JD records to Bad Boy records. I just wanted people to see it on paper, even when you read it without hearing it, you see the impact. Benjamin's money ain't a thing. Hold my nigga, but come on, man. Benjamin's is, is culture changing. Like that changed the game. Well, we already saw that. So yeah. that, that, that that it that, works in everybody who's used that song in a yeah. battle. It wins the round, no matter what the other that, person that plays. That shit embarrassed like, Cameron. I mean, it, it, I felt yeah. embarrassed for Cameron because I knew Cameron. It won embarrassed that round. Fab. I I knew Cameron won that round. It was like y'all ain't got no hits and shit like that. They played balling. Like, I'm sorry, locks ain't got no hits like that. The motherfuckers was like, That's all y'all got, and they're all about the business. Benjamin's play. I'm came like, on. like, this shit on. ain't even fair no more. Come on. So I agree with y'all on you know certain so, songs. Oh, go ahead. And my last point, right? So we know what Puff's hip hop bag looks like. His R and B bag is just as deadly. Does no, he have confessions? Probably not. No, but Jodeci, Mary, come on, what the fuck bro. Carl Thomas, Faith Evans, Mario, oh. 112. Like, what are we talking about right and we now? We saw what 112 did to Jagged Edge, exactly. Clink them boys, right? <laughs> leave Puff alone, man. Next which, question, which, man. Yeah, I, I leave Puff alone. I that one should have been live, though. I did. I felt that one should have been live, but that's just a, that's a side point. 
I've I, already I, stated that it, it, it's, it's Puff a, really shouldn't be battling anybody. It's but the if thing. I had to, if it was up to me and I had to choose, I would rather see the JD Puff. And you know what? That's why, I mean, I, I understand where you guys are coming from. I really do understand where you guys are coming from. But that's why you get so much backlash because you got people that are fans of both genres of music. I mean, well, not both genres. Yeah, both genres, hip hop and RB. Both genres of music. And truthfully, between the 90s and early 2000s, JD and Puff. And Puff, that. yeah, they orc they, they were orc- So, yeah. of course, everybody's going into, as you call it, fan mode and saying, that's the matchup I want to see. For me, but I'm just saying. I also think that's why I went on my rant that day. I also think people forget about what Puff has done. And I think it's almost like the LeBron thing where mm-hmm. people get fatigued with you winning so much. They forget about shit that you've done. Like you've done shit other people hasn't done. Very good point that even Snoop Dogg agreed with me about that. Puffy brought up on that live with JD that day. You talking all them record sales and you in the songwriter hall of fame and all that shit. Cool. Let's do solo careers. Puff got six number ones. Mm-hmm. Jay-Z don't got six number ones. Yeah. Little Wayne don't got six number ones. Puff Daddy, the solo artist, has six number one billboard records. So we talking all these Hall of Fame schematics and all of that shit. Like, come on, bro. What about our, let's just do solo careers, JD. You had a solo career. You put out a lot of solo music as a recording artist, not as a producer. Mm -hmm. JD, the recording artist. Puff wins six rounds with you just with them six number ones. You That's six rounds you lost off the rip. Because you don't have those in your bag. Leave Puff alone. That's Leave that man alone. alone. Leave Puffy alone. No, 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 no. Because that's the only way you get Puff in a versus battle. I don't agree with that at all. No, he, I, no he, I, I wanna I wanna see I wanna see Puff on stage. I wanna see Puff. But in he, the won't battle. he won't dree. He won't dree though. He won't dree. He don't want he don't want Jermaine. Something else growing up being a nigga growing up in that era, right? Mm-hmm. And being a nigga who was a little older than what I was in that era, but because my dad was in music and I was just engulfed in the culture, I knew about shit that I probably shouldn't have known about, blah, 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 whatever. At that time, JD and Puff looked at Jermaine Dupri as a biter. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but I'm here to give you some shit that was going on in the music no, business at that time. You got my attention. Eminem, I don't know if people remember, Eminem dissed JD on an exhibit record back in the day. You get what I'm saying? So JD and Dre were beefing because Dre felt like the brat was an image, a mockery image of Snoop Dogg. Big mm-hmm. flannel shirts, big baggy pants, braids, mm-hmm. West Coast kind of beat. She from Chicago. Why? She got the and all her beats. What are you doing, JD? Then on the flip side, you trying to be Puff because you in the videos dancing. You doing all the same shit Puff doing. So Puff was on JD's heels, but it wasn't public because they're all really friends, but it was a rivalry because just like in sports, it's gonna that's something that's competition in the shit. It's, it's just professional. But yeah. they look at him as little bro. And that's why he was little bro him every time he got on camera with JD, like, bro, where Dre at? No, nah, hey, skills. I can't believe I let me see where am I at? I stay beefing with JD to the day Dre two ways me that it's okay to stop blazing them. Oops, I put bro, they was on JD neck, bro. I'd never put that together, bro. I don't know how people in the industry just ignored that. I guess because it was Eminem, but I love when Eminem's in diss mode. Yes, I'm not say a fan what you of say. any other Eminem, but diss rapper Eminem. That's my favorite Eminem. I'm thumbs down on all the rest of that shit, but diss rapper Eminem. Anytime he's got a target and he on that target, man, do the fool with that shit, bro. He although people. he doesn't target quality opponents, but even though he doesn't point. often quality opponents but when he does it's entertaining even if it's the backstreet boys whoever he's cleaning up at that moment he's very dissective with his cleaning up you know what i'm saying like i say it like i reference all the time the eight mile verse he cleaned homie up in eight mile you know what i'm saying that's how you clean a nigga up in a battle situation he did it education education shout out to skills for that you know what (laughs) what i'm saying I thought about that when JD, when Puff was so appalled by the shit JD was saying on that live. If you really watch Fat Joe's live, Puff was appalled at JD. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. you're my man and all, but bro, you on here doing way too much, my nigga. And we not playing records. You like that. You're not, looking not at playing as, records. And not playing <laughs> records. And you're not looked at as a hip hop goat. At the end of the day, if you don't like Diddy personally, he's a hip hop goat. He gave us Biggie. If he didn't do shit else, bro, he gave us Biggie. And for that, he goes in the hip-hop GOAT category, along with Dre. Same shit. Dre gave us Easy e Cube, all these, all these characters that built a whole genre of music that Nipsey Hussle and Mozzie and all these niggas is still eating off of in 2021. Gangster rap from the West Coast is still a genre. 
and it's still making money from some shit that Easy and Dre them came up with on the on the fly in 1980, whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Ice T really started it, and then Dre them took it yeah, from right, there because Dre right. gives all props to Ice T as far as starting gangster rap. You know what I'm saying? But NWA, we all know, took it to the White House, took it to your to your living room. You know what I mean? They went to another level than Ice T and Schooly D them and niggas was doing back when gangster rap technically started. They took it and made it more commercial. You know what I'm saying? So. But JD not in that conversation. You feel me? I, I get it. I, I'm not. I'm not. Like how many classic. How many classic. Y'all are saying, how many I'm classic hip hop albums has JD been a part of? Huh? Classic hip hop albums has JD been a part of? What hard knock life? Because money ain't a thing was on there. Like that's what I'm saying. I mean, like that's I'll not be- a classic. But, Sorry. And then hard knock life's not even considered one of Hov's classics. But but. Yeah, that's on both of their albums. Yeah, but that's he was a part of Mace's Harlem World. That's one of my favorite rap albums. Mace's debut album was tough. JD produced the record on there. But that's what I'm saying. Puff's been a part of so much shit, bro. The man executive produced Nip's album. But we're saying the same thing. Weave, the man executive produced Nip's album. We we're saying French Montana's we're saying last the shit. Same like, thing. I've already said that Puff Dre didn't. was a part of Kendrick shit. Be. Like, what are we talking about? JD, you ain't a part of this shit. Like, them niggas is in another stratosphere, bro. Like, okay, but but do we even know if Dre even wants the battle with? But I'm just saying for Puff, people were acting like Puff was reaching, but he wasn't. No, that's I'm not more of a formidable I opponent. I'm reaching. just piggybacking on what I'm you're saying. saying. He's not as formidable as you're saying he is. No, visually, JD and Puff look like the same thing. Historically, exactly. Dre and exactly. Puff that's all are the same thing. That's all I was saying. That's listen, all. listen, it's listen. JD don't want it with the track masters, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. No smoke with the track masters, bro. Bro, I think for, I JD think I think the tunes are giving him some problems, bro. And I think for real are getting his ass, bro. I'll agree with Pause. you and you on one thing. Honestly, and Puff is probably the only person that could do this. You could probably battle JD and then two months later turn around and battle Dre and never play the same song twice. Oh yeah, Puff catalog is that. But, but, but for why, 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 why is it a big issue? Like I want people to understand, like we watching the Wu Tang saga series right now. Method Man's biggest record of his career featuring Mary J. Blige was a remix done by Puff Daddy. <laughs> RZA felt so awkward giving his record to Puff because he knows what Puff does, but he wasn't going to hold back Method Man's career because of his personal feelings about Puff. Like I want to apologize to you, bro. Um, we should have we should have been doing something like this, bro. Like, <laughs> too much, too much knowledge, too much history, bro. Like. I I'm, apologize, I'm a, bro. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a old nigga, but I'm older in my hip hop wisdom, bro. Like I'm a, I'm a historian with this shit, dog. Like the digging in the crates Wu Tang episode took me somewhere. If my, if you haven't watched the Wu Tang yet, like RZA digging for samples and playing them on the records, like me and my cousins used to go to record stores and do that back in the day. So I'm one of them guys, bro. So yeah, like yeah. when I dig into Puff, I respect that type of shit about Puff. Like records that we don't even. Think about when you think Puff. Don't just think Bad Boy. He affected the entire scope of hip hop, ninety five to like two thousand and right now. Like he's been had his hand, bro. Young Jock, Gorilla Zoe, Hood nigga. That's a Bad Boy South record. Yeah. Like you get what I'm saying. One of Jeezy's biggest records. Them boys. He played it in the battle against Gucci. That's a Puff Daddy record. Like that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, leave Puff alone, G. He's different. I, I forgot did. about Nipsey. I forgot He's about a Nipsey. Different dude, bro. So would you rather him just be a trophy, which a trophy gets put on? The no, I won't so puff the battle. Gotta, but okay. we got to give him a formal opponent. JD's not the formable opponent. Okay, so so Dre, so Dre, so Dre is the the formal. He's the formal opponent, and I could even say I don't have a problem with saying Dre could win, because that's how formable of opponent Dre is. I don't see that happening. You know what I'm saying? I I don't, I, I don't see that happening. And that's the thing with you. Huh? We're talking about gods. That's all I'm saying. So like yep. for Puff, I'm almost offended that I would have to settle for for the likes of JD. Thank you. It's if offensive. JD don't, if if he don't accept the, the well, I'm saying if Dre don't decides he don't want no part of this and doesn't want to do it, then does Puff just not battle and just say, he okay, I get who I want it? I can't. Because I don't get who I want it, so I'm just gonna sit back and yes, yes, because one niggas already know. Two, I gave you a chance. Play records. Get me off the couch. Make the discussion say, oh, shit, I'm watching this live, and JD got on Puff ass. Now I got to shut everybody else up. 
but he didn't show up. Man, I wouldn't have did that I, shit either. Why so not? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, go play, play my tracks that show, and then I see, can't use them because I don't we, already played them. We, no. that's my our point. catalogs are this big, bro. Ain't nobody, we, ain't that's nobody my else point. have to do that Niggas shit. Niggas ain't a part of the culture like that. I fuck with JD and what he's pro he's provided to music. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't a part of hip hop culture like that, bro. He not Wait, who JD not because uh, now, this is why I'm telling you, JD not <laughs> okay, okay. hip hop yes, culture. If when we was introduced, in, interview, I mean, talking to Reed backstage, mm -hmm. and Mook would have walked up, bro. We they battling on site, and then still going to do smack battle. That's Facts. what I'm saying. That's where Puff comes from. Puff's from Harlem, G. The birth of this shit, my nigga. You understand? I, I'm just giving you the dynamic of what Puff and Dre on the West Coast. He comes from the dynamic of that shit too. Gang banging hip hop. You're not calling me out. Man, in front of me and I ain't playing shit. Man, You're not getting that. Dr. Dre on that live and he ain't pressing the button. You ain't gonna hear that. Ding, 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 Dre. Man, he man. might cut it off man, and say, stop thing. playing with me, Puff. Dre gonna do something. The man JD said, man, I ain't doing that because we don't want to hear Mariah Carey claps. I don't want to hear that right One now. One more thing. You know what I'm JD, saying? JD was, had the silver spoon in his mouth. He didn't He didn't have the hunger that, that he didn't come from the street. His dad right. is one of the biggest yeah. black record executives in music. So he he, he, that, he, is that he, his fault? No, no, it's no, not. He just, he, just, he just wasn't built for it. I'm, that's what I'm saying. He, he just, just comes from a battle. different culture. He didn't have to grind. Okay, Puff had to like sleep and ride the train from Washington, D.C. to New York every day. Yeah, get coffee, he, get Rails, coffee. Him and Mary Jane yeah, slept on the that. floor. All that. JD's dad was a record executive. First time we seen JD was a background dancer for Houdini in a music video at like 12, 13 years old. You only get to do that if your dad works in the music video. You didn't have to grind to get there, but I'm not taking any of that away from JD. All I'm saying is, them 33 million sold confessions and all that—that's cool, but that shit don't match up to that bad boy shit. Bro. The only reason I brought that up was because that when 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 uh, when Puff brought that shit out and they play your shit, he was like he backed down a little bit. He didn't have that that automatic grind. Like, right, 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 jump right into it. That yeah, hunger. Yeah, he didn't jump hunger. right into it, and that's when it what? died. That's when if I go to Lux on third and I walk in scale shit and I say, man, fuck this shit that y'all playing. This is what I'm rocking. Scales going to the DJ booth ASAP. Yeah. Hey, get this nigga weave a mic and, and we we finna shut the show down. It's yeah. hip hop. It's hip hop. Nigga, pull this card. You taking pictures in front of Madison Square Garden talking about I'm looking for puff. I'm Come here. On, I'm here. We rich already. We don't need the versus bag. Play a record. That's what that's what this shit is about, right? Play a record. That's it. You got Puff at his rawest form because you don't want Puff in Atlanta or Madison Square Garden because he's better showman than JD, bro. He gonna show the fuck out, my I, nigga. I agree. You're better I'm off doing it right now. He gonna have his sons out there. You seen his kids, man? He gonna have his sons out there, Harlem shaking and shit, drinking some rock, man. He got all the bitches. As soon as Justin and the other little son walk out, all the women on Puff's side. Battle over. <laughs> you done lost the battle now. Battle over, man. That man. I'm telling that you, man. man. Puff gonna come out with all kind of rock, loon them coming, Lil Kim, Jada. You know when Jada show up, that's three, four rounds. Jada winning for Puff just because he in the room. Because Jada's the versus goat. He's the goat of versus. So, and Puff got that cheat code too, along with Biggie. He's got a dead rapper. The dead rap. Jay Drake, Jay Z, <laughs> Pac, and Biggie are deadly in versus battles. True. Any records featuring those four individuals can get you around against whoever. You know what I'm saying? And but, Puff got a bunch of those. As, as, Puff as, could as, damn near win off of B-sides, This could bro. be a whole episode. Huh? Puff could win off B-sides. B-sides, bro. Remixes. We, he, can we, the, he can be the nigga with remixes. We could talk about this shit for the next two Man, hours. Man, did Mariah Carey bro. All Dirty Bastard <laughs> remix. Unfortunately, we got to move on, Scales. The fantasy remix. That's a bad boy remix, man. So, early I mentioned about how the world changed for the, 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 the hip-hop culture on March 24th, 2020. Um, from then to now, what do you think of the evolution of verses? When I ask you that question, and I'm gonna go to both of y'all. When I ask y'all that question, do you think it's where it should be, or do you think something else there's an element missing out of there? Weave, well, you can go first. Um, I, I think the concert format is what brings it to life, right? I would love to see them get out of New York, you know, come to Houston. They don't really care about the COVID protocols and shit like that, but you know, hey, whatever. But um, I, I will I will admit I was wrong. Right. I'm looking at some of these matchups. They grabbing, you know, me versus Tory. You know, they got a whole bunch of niggas that don't really deserve to be on that stage without that catalog. And I felt it was dying. But they've done a good job resurrecting. The concert format brings a different taste to it. Right. And the only thing that's left is to start traveling the world, which is going to be a little bit difficult. But 
uh, once they do that, yeah, it's it's unstoppable. Okay. Um, you, you have to clean it up. That's that's okay. my only thing. You can't just have Bow Wow and Soldier Boy. It, it just it it makes it look a little tacky. That's all I'm saying. Cheesy. Cheesy. Word, a word I'd okay. use. So but, maintain the stature. Make it godly. You know, what, you what battle to, did you think it was dying at? Before I get to skills, what was uh, that? What battle did you think it was on its like maybe at its lowest or or on its down? I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, man. Once they start rolling off E versus Trina, Bow Wow versus yeah. Soldier Boy, yeah. I'm like, yo, like what, what are we doing? You know, and they they bounced back and they you know they gave us keep sweating Bobby, which still wasn't the matchup I was looking for, but then you. They got at the lab and said, okay, Locks versus Dipset, Ja versus Joe. You know, like, they kind of recovered in that sense. But stop getting the homies. I don't want to see, you know, drag on and make <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because right now, what we're supposed to get state prop in, I mean, Beans and Nori is next, right? That's, it's, yeah. it's in the work. I don't know if you listen to Drink Chance, but yeah. Nori's been campaigning for this for the longest. I, I mean, seen... this, is, this has been like six months of Nori campaigning. Nori doesn't want any smoke. I'm sorry. And he no. had beans on his show, no. and he bet nothing short of big beans to do it. First and of beans all, told him, you know, put up a bag. They got their own side bet of 100k. Beans got beans had a nice run, and then where Nori loses is, is the J, is the Jay Z bag. Beanie Siegel got some classic records with Hove, like shit that didn't even make the radio, but the streets know. Yep. Like ignorant shit. Yeah, yeah, like when ignorant shit come on, Nori, what are you playing after it, ignorant shit? It ain't shit, nothing bro. you can like, tell me about beans because that was my favorite rapper. Off even though what club. we do is wrong, like Nori got some big records, but you don't, them records you got in culture shaking, like what we do is wrong. No, like, not at all. Yeah, it's on. They, they, they don't go long either. They no, short, they don't go short, long. They like, short. And all honesty, I like the war report, but I don't think it was. I don't know how Nori, much. I don't think it was what Nori. I don't even was. think he plans on playing much of that. What word? Now that I'm a big component Noriega fan. It's Nori the solo artist. Nori got CNN. You know what I'm saying? The camera on the record that Jada is playing every battle. And that works. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know about he got about four, five, maybe. Super thug. Super thug. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He got about four or five. He got the he gonna be playing trying to play some of that reggae tone shit too. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't gonna work, B. No, nah, that shit not about to work against Beans. Beans was the hardest nigga in the game besides DMX at that time. Like, it was DMX and Beans. Like, you didn't want to see them niggas in the alley, and they were making the hardest music in the in the music business oh, that's at that time. That's my fucking favorite. Yeah, you know, like, you know, the, the, Beans is a different animal. If I'm like, Beans, I'm playing the Jada disc. Right, what you gonna bring Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly, bro. His mixtape bag is deep. His radio bag is deep. Then I said he got a Jay-Z bag. Like, he's a, he's a dangerous... Dude, in this in this format too, his twenty is dangerous. Even though he didn't have a long career, he was that strong in his four or five year run that he got twenty. You well, the, the same question go to you, uh, Scales that I asked. We, I, uh, I agree with I, I agree with with Weave. I love the live in person, even even when they had Jeezy and Gucci in the same room. I didn't. I enjoyed them being in the same room more than I enjoyed the actual battle itself. Mm -hmm. It was just the fact that they were in the same room. That shit got me. Like I said, I'm a big fan of smack battles. So it took me back to that platform. Niggas battling in the park, battling in the lunchroom. It took me back to that. So I like that. I like the old school. One of my favorites that I left off to was the Isley Brothers Earth Wind. They shit was dope that yeah, night. Like, that was a beautiful night of music. That, Patty, Patty, if it wasn't for Steve Harvey. If it wasn't for Steve too, Harvey. He talks too bad. Yeah, he was annoying. <laughs> but like even Gladys Knight and Patty LaBelle, you know, like it was it was nice where we had some magical moments. So I want to salute versus for those nights oh. too. But then we also had the Bow Wow Soldier Boy shit. I magical. Thought, Erica Badu. Erica and, uh, Badu Jill. Jill. I That's also felt like it started going on a decline too around the Ashanti Keisha Cole. That's when I felt like it started taking a little dip. And then we got Soldier Boy Bow Wow. Like it started. And now, like he said, they bringing it back. Dipset in the locks really saved it. Like for me, because I, I thought they were losing steam, steam, and that battle brought it right back. So do y'all think the versus to. bag now has anything to do with you know people, you know, being more, you know, uh, apt to yeah, because you know, they got more up. money now. Yeah, that's well, why they, they weren't getting paid at first. No, know, and just... that's why I'm saying, like we've said they can reach for bigger fish now. That's why Puff's interested in doing it because the bag, the purse is bigger now. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think Puff even care about the, the plan. Well, he's already a sponsor. Yeah. Ciroc already sponsors yeah, so every versus he, battle. So it, he's gonna get his off the back end anyway. He's already making money. Money off of her, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, because he wanted it originally on Revolt TV, exactly, and something contractually didn't work out with that, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, I think, uh, since its inception, um, over the course of 
what the last what are we at 16 17 months mm-hmm. of versus everything starts off well it started off on a high it hit a low i will give you it hit a low and i think it hit a low for me when they couldn't get the uh, the technology right, yeah. the audio right. You remember? Uh, mm. I think it was the one twelve Jack the Edge. Had Jack problems. Edge. Yeah, uh, Nelly, Nelly and Luda had problems. Well, that was because of a storm, though. Yeah, but babyface, you know, babyface, and Teddy Riley. But that was one of the earlier battles. But I think it had hit a low because it hadn't quite figured it out. Which I can ride that wave. I can ride the storm. You know, when you're trying to figure shit out. I think the Bow Wow and, you know, that was to a certain group. I'm never going to knock nothing that I think was targeted to a certain group. I'm just with Weave, though. Neither one of them niggas got 20 songs. So they uh, really shouldn't. Trina and Eve I, don't I got 20 a, songs. A lot of the like, battles that, you know, when you just go off the rip or you can Google, you know, Billboard hits and shit like that. A lot of motherfuckers didn't have 20 hits. I was telling y'all Bobby Brown had no business doing a, a versus. He had no, no he didn't have 20 I told songs. people everybody had Bobby winning. I'm like, show me 20 Bobby Brown records that no. y'all figure are hits. They have an image that he's he still got new edition songs. Man, Keith, he didn't Keith Sweat is his a, biggest, they biggest hits he wasn't on. He Keith Sweat on. is a pin, man. <laughs> Keith Sweat is a pin. He wrote some of the biggest records in the 90s, besides having his own records. Like that wasn't a fair battle anyway. I like I like I like where it's at right now. I'm excited to see what it do in the future. I would like to even get this timing shit down with these artists coming out there and they're 45 minutes late and shit. Like I mean, that, that's nigga know. shit. Yeah, it is. But in versus is some nigga shit. If they ain't gonna play them on the weekends, which they very seldomly do, because some of these battles, I'm like, dog, I gotta work in the morning, but I wanna work. I knew the locks and Jada Kiss. I mean, uh, locks and the Dipset was going down. I knew it, but I had to work the next day. I stayed up. I bit the bullet. But I could have been really partying because I was always a Locks fan. But I told yeah. people Dipset had no business in that battle. Mm-mm. But see, I don't think they, huh? We're back outside now, right? So we can't, you know, we can't have them on the weekends because there's just more things that are, you know, better to do. We'll just watch that shit later. You know what I'm saying? So well, having it on the weekends, figure watch parties and shit out. If you know, for what being what, you know. There's marketing to be done in, in the small sector, too, off of shit like this. Man, listen, Tori, we done kicked it in Houston. Last thing we talking about is going to watch a fucking Versus. Versus, facts. Facts. I, th- like, I think it will work for a certain group of people. For a certain group of people. Nah, I'm with Weave. I think they got to travel with it, man. That's it. They got to travel with it. You know what I mean? Places is, It's places that's open. Well, Atl- Atlanta's open like Houston. Wait, hold so, on. You know what you mean? call it? Was that Magic City? Gucci and... Um, yeah, but you, it was still had a capacity limit, though. See, New York didn't have a capacity well, limit. You just had to be vaccinated in that room with the locks and dip set. And you saw that room, bro. It was the energy in that room. Jadakiss could have played anything and it was going to ring off in that room. It was the energy in that no, room. No, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is they're not, I don't think they're opposed to traveling. I, I, I don't necessarily think they're opposed to traveling, but I think they absolutely have to open up the traveling bag. The next chapter of this shit has to be a traveling bag. Like, I would love to see Pharrell versus Missy in Virginia Beach. Okay. Like, that's like, fire to me. What, like, I'm, what I'm saying is, okay, like, if they decided to do a baby versus Master P, I can't see it anywhere but other than Nola. At, yeah, in New, or- in New Orleans. And I think they would go to Nola. I'm, I don't think they're above traveling. I think it's down to the artists and how hard they campaign. And I think food. COVID's playing a big problem in that also. But I'm just saying it, what I would like to see next happen for the platform would be that, is that. We get these matchups in places like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't, you know. can't folk. I want to. I'm looking in the comments. They don't have to do three six and bone. They can keep that. We don't need that. <laughs> well, no, I don't want a three six and bone either. I'd rather three six go against somebody else because they got a production bag. Yeah, so they yeah. need to go against a, 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 a very nice production yeah, bag. They need to go you, against, you know, they'll probably get cleaned up by Neptunes, but they need to go against somebody that rap and produce. No, they, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, that, the clips wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, uh, not the clips, but Neptunes wouldn't work. I mean, that's and what was the um D'Angelo shit? That was a, that that was, was a low moment. That was just a concert. Somebody is supposed to be battling. I forgot who it was. Gotti and Maxwell. Tim. Oh, Maxwell. Yeah, it was right. Maxwell, oh, Maxwell and D'Angelo. Yeah, Maxwell. Okay, yeah, Maxwell. Okay. And then it just ended up being a concert. Yeah, yeah. And it was cool. But that was again at the inception stages. That was still early. And I don't, I don't, I can go back and listen to my beginning podcast and cringe when I listen to them. So I, I know how things start out. But the thing yeah. about the earlier shit was that it brought us close to being next to these people that we idolized and saw them in a real conversation with real motherfuckers live. That it was, we saw them, we saw them like, like just, you okay. Know. So for Ted, like for me, a Ted talk 
during versus was the RZA in premiere. Yeah, battle. that was probably like the lowest rated battle, least watch. But just to hear I them, I think it was Beanie Man. Just, Beanie Man's was the lowest. That shit was fire though. Yeah, that right. was the first time we saw right. motherfuckers in the same room. Remember the police came and came shut theirs down right. in the middle of it because they was in the same room partying. But RZA in premiere for me, for a nigga like me digging in the crates, I'm going back to that samples and the shit, all of that to see them talk cloth and be like man when you put that record out or when i heard that mystery of chess boxing you know what i'm saying to see premiere react to rizza drop these records or rizza lose his mind to the mass appeal beat when they come on that shit was fire to me because yeah. we've never seen our favorites like you said face to face in the same room like that showing each other love at I, least i appreciate like, that i mean even 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 as archaic and like the sound was fucking fucked up, up. who cares i didn't care about none of that it was real it was, bro. Was it was real and then after the back and forth, I believe for me, it would have been yeah. X and Snoop because they were in the same room. They were giving each other props. It looked like Snoop was just going to watch X until that fucking second round happened. And X began to play, you know, some of his bigger albums or whatever. But they gave each other props the whole way. And hey, dog, I remember when. No, that was a dope that battle. Shit. That I'm was like, one of that was that was genius marketing by Versus. That's when I understood Versus understood the marketing concept and how big this platform could be to put DMX and Snoop Dogg, the dogs of hip hop, in a room for twenty songs together. Like that was just genius. New York and L.A. Like that was fucking genius. And that's kind of I think what Puff is trying to recreate with Drake. You got to have those moments. Why not New York and L.A. and we in a battle format? Why not? Like, I, I don't get why people are kind of like opposed. Like, you can't just skip over Atlanta. Yes, we can for historical purposes right now. Sit well, this round so, out, Atlanta. Sit this round out. Just sit this round I'm out. For historical purposes, I agree with you. Just sit this round if, out. If, if we reaching back, then yeah, yeah we got to reach way back. I had a new can, only right, an old school hip hop nigga like yourself. You got to have New York and LA. You do. You got to, man. You know and I, I, I think that would be the benefit of having Puff and, and Dre. Yeah. Even though I don't think Dre bag is big enough. I know. I know niggas. And I'm like, with you on that. But I don't, we, I don't, can, we can. It'll be an know. interesting situation. It'll you would watch it. It'd be great television. I still watch it because it's, yeah. it's, 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 I think what happened. What will happen is people like Weave and Scales will will, will talk this and manifest this into. Ain't that the word? They yeah. Use? Yeah. Manifest this into existence, and then Dre goes out there and messes around and gets handled by Puff. And everybody, see, Puff is the greatest. I told y'all, well, I, we knew he was going to lose. We right. said he was going to lose it. But again, 50 Cent, The Game, Kendrick. Like, there's a, we we have to be mindful Facts. Right, of what Dr. Dre has. Like, it's Man. almost. Nobody's taking that away. I'm, not, I'm not, right. never taking that away, but the R&B bag is so deep. But and I'm, if he goes I, into what, it, y'all, y'all going to say it. See, Dre can't what do I'm that. Saying I is, said he couldn't do it. That's not fair. I'm trying to that, tell y'all, Dre it. don't have to play. Puff better not play that R&B verse that Dre shit. I'm telling y'all that it's now, a, and I and love Puff. I'm telling yeah, you that now. Drake, he bet not pull none of that Puffy shit out. Puffy whole ass to get up there and say some shit like, well, Dre, I bet you ain't got none of these, and then start spinning Jody C records and shit like that. Because you know I, he'll I, do I that. I told y'all this is why. And then, and then, and then Dre will he'll, say, he'll take the shit. Dre will come back and say, I don't need none of those. Yeah, I, I don't have to do because I got these. You see what I'm saying? I got these, bro. I don't know. The shit talking will take him, it will, it will put him down now, I think. It's gonna it's gonna oh. knock him down a couple. That's how it'll do. Even though he got some shit, the shit talking. Like Puff making... can't say he got more money than Dre. They both billionaires. Yeah. So we both billionaires, boss. I mean, I got hits just like. See what I'm saying is match the moments. I'm there for it. All of us grew up in this culture, right? So match the moments. Look, look. When California Love come on, right? Not one of my favorite songs, but it's a hip hop moment. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Those are and ain't nothing but a G thing. Hip hop moments, juicy hip hop moment. Black Rob, whoa, hip hop moment. Get what I'm saying? All about the Benjamins. Victory, hip hop moment. Shit. Buster Rhyme screaming all over victory is a hip hop moment. That's not just a record. Scales, walk me through being in the club when in the club rang off. Yikes. Jesus. Atlanta, 2004. Michael Jordan's last All-Star Game weekend. I'm in the A when 50's pushing this record. G-Unit buses all over. Bro, 50 times a night, every club we went to. <laughs> this is Atlanta. He's not from Atlanta. This shorty folk name, and I'm talking about Atlanta had a run. They had a scene at this time. Goody Mobs, huge, CeeLo, Outkast, Jeezy's hot. 
Get what I'm saying? Atlanta had they were this is their time. This Gucci man, this no 50 came through that weekend. Nah, bro. In the club, go shorty. It's your birthday. First of all, any happy birthday record works. I don't do. give a fuck. Any they happy do. birthday song works. Chains work, the the Luke's and, work. Uh, the, two the, chain shit work, Luke shit work, uh Stevie Wonder shit work. Mm-hmm. Name them. Any variation of happy birthday works. And any even Drake, Ratchet Happy Birthday. I see girls post that song. That wasn't even a charted record for him. And girls post that every birthday. I see women post that all over my timeline. Ratchet Happy Birthday. Has anyone heard of this guy called The Game? Like, Dre has, he, his bag is stupid. Like, to think, and we're only talking 20 records. Hey, man, Dre, Dre produced dun, 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 Mary J. Blige. Mm. Hateration, holleration. That's a Dr. Dre record. <laughs> Hey, you know, got Drake up Drake. Up. And Dre ain't got no R&B? I didn't say that. You are just I said, and I said, and what you're going to say, and well, whoever the motherfucker in the comments said, I didn't say he didn't have a bag. No, I said his fuck. R&B I'm bag is not you. bad. But I'm, saying, but I'm saying, Thank you. but I'm just saying, and okay, so then I'm going to be technical. So, so we're, Puff can play like executive produced R&B records by him. Not even records that he like wrote or had his hands on. Just shit that he had hands in, right? I guess what his name was on, yeah. So Dre was a part of Just Be a Man About It. The Tony Braxton record. Mm -hmm. He talks on it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's talking on the record. And he he mixed the record. He didn't produce it, but Babyface sent it to him Mm -hmm. to mix it. Okay? Don't put his cell phone to shit. Yeah, he put his cell phone. (laughs) He talked on it like, yeah, I like this. Yeah, this Dre, baby. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Dre's been a part of some R&B records. He has. His, he has. It's not as deep as Puffy now. Puffy's R&B okay. GOAT. As long as we keep yeah, that no, part R- of what but I just like, Dre, but just Dre, like Dre got a Crown Royal bag. And, 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 and Puff got and, a duffel bag. Puff, Puffy got a duffel bag. And, on, he got, I, feel he like, on, Louis, and I, I feel like on the gangster side, Dre has a duffel bag. Yeah. And Puff has a Crown Royal bag. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, but, yeah, but in my opinion, in my, well, it just go back to who got first round. You know who flipped the coin, who go first? Because that's the person that's gonna fuck around and take this shit and and control that first round. That's why I was saying. Now you can flip it. I'm not saying because we've seen it done. We seen um, uh, Luda do it to Nelly because Nelly went first, mm-hmm. and Luda was able to flip the script. Two chains kind of flipped on Rick Ross too that night. His back half was deadly. He was kicking Ross ass on that back half. Yeah, that was. I forgot about that one. That was a that was a surprise one though. I had. Yeah. I, I had Rick Ross. Yeah, we all change. did, but then we had to I remember. I still think Ross won it. We in still, my opinion. We still had to remember the power of two chains. He like, did, this he guy did. has been on a run since he showed up. He I still th- ain't stopped. I, th- I think that would be JD and Puff. I think J- 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 Puff will win, and JD would come in the end, kind of like two chains. Then, like, oh, I forgot about that shit. I forgot about this shit. He wouldn't win, but he'd be. It's just hip hop moments for me, like he, Craig he, Mack flavor in your ear, bro. Like, I remember when that. Debuted on BET. I don't think that's like, getting played though. That's though. a big record, but I don't think that's getting played. That's one of Bad Boy's biggest records though. Yeah, but I don't think that's getting played. played. Well, see, yeah, what I'm, like, I'm coming to see watching these, and that's why I hate. And I know everybody does it, but I hate that what they gonna do when they play this question like Puff because got, like I'm just, some of them songs don't get played, and then when they do get played, they're not played when you would expect them like to the be played. Like the one hit wonder so shit Puffy like got that. is just dangerous, dog. Like mm-hmm. Puffy got hits on one hit, like people we never heard from again. Truthfully, this whole table is saying the same thing. Like Little Wayne, hold on, mm-hmm. Little Wayne and Swiss Beats <laughs> just got back on the charts a couple years ago with a very big record, and all they did was take G Dep special delivery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They didn't change anything, and Little Wayne rapped to it. What the fuck, ho? In him up, oh, I said big when, record for Wayne. That's special delivery. That's G Depp. So you telling me he can't play special delivery in the battle? Everybody knows that beat. And what, and what, what, Everybody in the world knows that. What beat. what would, what what would ghost on the play? What did ghost open up with? He opened up with the fucking special, special delivery special, remix. Special delivery remix. That beat is hard. That beat is but hard. I would be fun. expecting Puff to play special delivery. Mike I mean, Black Rock. Like, I'm just. When, I'm going one hit. One, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going. One, I'm going song. one hit wonder shit. Black Rob. Whoa. Shine. Bad boy. Whoa. That's yeah. you don't want to face record when those records ring off in concert places. Mm-hmm. Fuck Shine. You might not like Shine. Biggie Bite. Whatever. That record in a battle format. You don't want to face I records that like song that. Before I even knew what Shine looked you don't like. want to face records I like Shine that. Look like B. Puffy has produced and been a part of records that snatched your ear when you heard them immediately. Not mm-hmm. no forty times it's on the radio now. You like, yeah, this my shit. Like, no, the first time you heard it, like, I'm not. I, I ran with niggas who love Tupac. 
Puff put out records that even them niggas had to be like, dog, this shit cold in the motherfucker, dog. Fuck bad boy. But this shit right here? No, for real, the niggas I was running with, bro, I was the only East Coast nigga in my crew. Every nigga I was around was a West Coast, down South, ghetto boy, Pac nigga, bro. But Puff put out records that even niggas couldn't hate on and hated his guts. They even had to be like, nah, that shit right there? That East Coast ass shit right there? No. Nah. That's and, and, and it's about the feeling. When Dr. Dre plays explosive, how do you feel? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's what beats that? You know what I mean? Like, it, I mean, What's we can fucking name when you hear the build up, and then it dropped. No, 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 Ain't even no words. He hasn't even rapped yet. I remember watching DMX, like, bro, why they doing that to X? This is Hall of Fame shit y'all got X going again. Snoop got Hall of Fame records, man. And Snoop didn't play all this shit. Bro, he didn't have to. Yeah, that's you know, he light on but, X. That's his guy, man. But, but I told when we first first had this conversation, I always said Snoop was a cheat code. Yeah, Dre, that's, that's bro. 20, that's twenty. Well, just not that. That's twenty years of fucking hits, bro. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to go up. The Snoop when Snoop on that back half, he started playing that shit with the East Siders. No limit. Those songs were good, but they didn't have the impact that Drake had, and that's why X was able to catch up on the back half because he started playing his monumental hits. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Dre is different. 112 won about eight rounds with Puff Daddy produced records. Cleaned them up. I'm like, dog, this JD production, this Jagged Edge shit don't hit like this bad boy shit hit. These Mario Winans records and shit is sounding different compared to this Jagged Edge shit, man. I want to see it. I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I want to see it. Like from a fan standpoint, I mean, we oh. ain't going to miss with either. We use the battle. Dog, so, you, I mean, you can we, hate me now with Nas. Well, well, can that ain't your shit. But again, he, we he can, but I won't stop now. How we got back Dog, there, like, I what, do when not that know. come on? <laughs> what is JD playing after that, bro? You can hate me now? The breath. Oh, See, bro. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, like, so oh. How we got back here, I do not know, but we got to move on. My bad. And uh, this is uh, the close. So this is the final question. Um, answer how you want. But if you could put a, be a versus battle together, we and you can use anybody. Anybody you want to, what would be the versus battle that you you want to see? I'm going to do uh yay versus Pharrell strictly producing. Dope, dope. And you have to have five rounds of creating something on the spot. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Damn. Mm, that's pay, that's pay per view. Yeah, right. You got to pay to see that shit. <laughs> that dog. boy Yaden got pretty nice with that live finger drumming. He done got pretty. Did. got pretty dope with that shit right there. That's that would be dope. But just a question, not changing your battle. Um, uh, just for real, or are you gonna do the Neptunes? Because I'm just doing for real. Just for I real. Can, yes, just. I, I get where you're going with that, but uh, <laughs> like, like oh, for real is strong enough. Poor Chad. Can, yeah. <laughs> like, leave mm. Chad up, man. Do you think he's strong enough by himself? Yeah, I think. I, 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 I would sure. like to say Neptunes, but this is his battle. So I, yeah. I give, it, I give, I give yeah, it to because you. I'm looking Chad at Chad slept on man. Chad, it's not, a, it's not, it's not a matter of discarding Chad's mm -hmm. contribution, but when you work with somebody like Chad for so long, certain elements of him just kind of become embedded inside of you. So I feel like you well, almost you bring Chad without bringing Chad. You hey, like we can be at the war room together. For example, the Jay Z record from the Black Album. That's uh, all for real. So high off that yeah, song, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The drums, those are Chad's drums, but mm -hmm. Chad wasn't in the studio working on that beat. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I get what Weave is saying. He's in Pharrell's DNA. You can't take Chad out yeah, of a Pharrell beat. beat. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got you. You know what I mean? I don't, I, if you won't ask me the same question, yeah. I don't really have a matchup. I got people that I want to see in verses. So yay, somebody I would like to see Drizzy in one. I like to see Wheezy in one. And I like to see Missy in one. Those are the four people that I would like to see. And Outcast. Outcast is my fifth. I would like to see Outcast, but I don't know who would go against Outcast. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, Lee Outcast alone. Lee That's alone. what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know who goes against Outcast. Like, or maybe if they can just go against had to, If I had to reach, it would probably wind up being uh, uh, the rest in peace, Pimp C, but they'd probably grab UGK for that. Yeah. Yeah. If, and, if, and I if love I UGK, reach, but they can't hang with Outkast. No, it would it would be better if it was like UGK and Eight Ball and them. But yeah, that's a better matchup. I don't know. I'm leaning. I'm leaning for a battle for somebody to go against Future. 
Yeah, if you, I, I, well, you know, they've been throwing that Wayne Future thing around. I think they've been disrespecting Wayne with that meme, but you know, you know, <laughs> you know. See, I don't think I don't think it would be a watch by any means because I I think Future, depending on what Wayne plays, I think Future's got some stuff that he could he could battle back with. Future definitely has twenty hits. I would like to I would like to see. I don't care who Future goes against, but I would like to see a. See, I think their matchup goes back to this because both of them niggas is is goaded. So then we have to go to who plays more bigger hip hop moments. You know what I'm saying? And I just think Wayne has more. Oh, I got no doubt. Because of the cat on the cash money run, but run then, alone. But like, then if you do that, then who who does Drake go against? I mean, talking rap, rap Drake or singing Drake or both mixed. Is it Chris Brown that is it yay? Is it, I don't know. These are some big matchups. Well, Chris Brown already said he wasn't doing a versus. Yeah. So Chris Brown said he got to go against himself. <laughs> or Usher. I thought or, or, I thought Usher was a or, formidable or, or, opponent. Or yeah, because absolutely. we've just to go to you first before we sign off. Um, because I know both of y'all are big hove stands. Then at this point, is there anybody that could give you a show? I'm not saying beat hove, but is there anybody that could give you a show with hove? No. 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 I think for the culture, him and Nas would be cute. It'd be no. cute. No, no, we're, no, we're, no, we're no watch you wouldn't watch it. Why not? He, he, For the he, culture, he, they he, battle. He, Why wouldn't you watch he, two niggas who had beef? He's gonna, he gonna run through Nas so bad. I mean, I like Nas, man. As a matter of fact, I love Nas. I'm not about to sit here and watch this happen on live. Nas got it. 20, man. I know Nas got 20, but he ain't got 20. Jay Z 20. No, he don't. Those two got, 20 are different. He got 20 to go on the, on the versus screen and get cleaned up by Hove 18 to 2 or whatever, you but it's still gonna be, you know. You talking about me having 20 pennies and you having 20 quarters. For the culture, man. It's for the culture, man. Yeah. Or Nas got twenty. Jay Nas can go definitely. against Beyonce. Who? Huh? Jay can go against his wife. Mm. Damn, I might have I to ride sp- with the I queen can't. on this one. <laughs> I, I might have to ride with the queen on I that. I can't one. speak knowledge beyond that one. See, then that takes the hip hop element out of it. Yeah, like, it's strategy at that point. It but, is. But hey, I mean, nobody beats Hope though. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Fine, big. I don't know. I think I think the queen might back him into a corner. I don't know. But y'all got he only can bring out twenty. Who Jay? That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's not like he can bring them all out. We thought we think about his whole bag. He got to pick twenty of the right ones. Well, to go against the queen, he definitely got to go against anybody. If I mean, even now, because you know, you got to bring out the twenty the right ones. Because the wrong no, because it come down to beats for me with Nas. That's why I say he lose. On, on the, on but Nas been a part of twenty records. He that got you twenty. Like, he got twenty of them. If I made a list of twenty, if I made you a playlist of twenty Nas records, you're gonna like all twenty of them Nas records. I understand that, that, and I'm not saying I wouldn't. I told you I love Nas, but the thing about Nas is Nas has been good, but Nas hasn't had the beats. He hasn't had the producing that Jay had. So Jay is gonna play shit that we didn't listen to in clubs, we didn't roll to in cars, we didn't kick it to, and all this other shit. And it's gonna resonate different, as you said, playing through a fucking coliseum or a stadium. Or I guess whatever. this battle kind of is where you're at too, because like if you in New York, Hove is Hove, but Nas is Nas in New York also. And like some of that illmatic shit, like them niggas is gonna be like, Jay, you're not beating this. I don't give a fuck what you say, my nigga. You're not beating this. This is illmatic, son. You got, got five got mics in the source, you son. In, you got shit you could drop in a club and just no, tear that I shit mean, down. I mean, he got a lot of shit like that, bro. Major Look will shut that shit Yeah, Major down. Look is crazy. Jadakiss yeah. wins rounds with the Major Look remix. Yeah. Like, so Nas can play Major. Ludacris played Major Look and cleaned Nelly up in a round with that because he was on the remix. That's yeah. Nas's song. Fuck them niggas we're, first. We're, we're, That's we're, Nas's we're song. Talking, we're talking Nelly. We're, this is Jay Z. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I know, I know, I know. But I'm even Weave, I'm using that as an example that. Jadakiss has used that song twice. He used it against Fabulous and Dipset, and that's Nas's record. Made you look. They shooting. That's Nas' song, and that was a big song. It like, doesn't you know, win the round. Was a big song. Like I'm not gonna sit here and poo poo on Nas like he didn't have big records too. But still, he had big records. He didn't, but he didn't have whole big. What? If, no, he if, definitely didn't have if whole. Didn't, I gave records. you. If I gave you two, but he had big. Battle. But I'm trying to say, give me another nigga from New no, York. No, that must be stuck in the Twilight Zone. No, I'm, I'm saying, the one capping for Jay Z, and now you're. No, the no, one no, no. I'm, I'm not even saying. <laughs> I'm just saying to give my nigga a formable opponent. I don't think anybody can beat him. But I'm saying for nostalgic purposes and culture wise. Nas is the only person that I would even want to see 
act like they finna take Jay on in a in a in a verses. You know what and I'm all I'm saying, Scales, is that there's 20 records that beat made you look. That's all I'm saying. Damn, Jay got 20 that beat made you look. You know that. Ain't no ties in there, weave. Man, I'm wrong. You look was a problem, dog. Man, okay, so was so was can I live? You know, like, so I, I, I got I got <laughs> joints. I can Jay Z standards in a strong none. Come on, fam. No scales, scales. Before the night is up, I'm sending you 20 records that will be made you look. That's still gonna be debatable. You still gonna <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, and, and no, I mean we because I'm, I'm I'm gonna be honest with it. I'm sitting here because you know I'm whole baby man. I'm I'm sitting here. I'm gonna listen objectively, and I, I, I'm gonna listen. And I'm just trying to think like I too would like to see this. List. Yeah, yeah. Because 20? I'm not a stand of either of them, so I would like to look at her from clear eyes and make sure <laughs> this is, this is ten weave. I got twenty records that beat. Damn, I want to agree with that, but I. Now, granted, I'm cheating. I'm grabbing. It's on. I'm grabbing what we do. I'm grabbing records. But, oh, here you go. Niggas here in you Paris. Go. I might grab that too. It's, yeah, it's, it's all records. I, hey, no church in a while. I'm grabbing yeah. records. So be. I'm grabbing all versus you know quality records. But yeah, there's twenty. If Hove wanted to get in his bag. And shut him out, he could do that. All right, you gotta end this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some bullshit. <laughs> you might be right, but you know, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stand for Nas because I mean who else besides Nas? LL Cool J? Like that's what I'm trying to say. Like, who else from the East Coast could even go in the ring? He hasn't home? done a, a versus no, LL is a little dated and he 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 transcends a lot of uh like different the, genres the decades and shit yeah, and but, different genres and he got some hits but he still ain't whole no he oh no whole. no no i just said damn ll has never done a verse i know but I, that's I, a I, name i've never thought of when i thought of verses i died yeah because ll is the reason a lot of people are rapping now shit maybe outcast what go against ho yeah that's how i view outcast as a group you One know, person. I love. I, like I said, I'm a Wu Tang baby, but Wu Tang can't fuck with Outkast and no verses. They getting cleaned up. Oh, no, I love the Wu. No, I, that, that's a those fighting words right there, bro. I'm gonna tell you somebody else before we get out of here. I like to see as a versus. This is my wild card, CeeLo Green. Mm. That nigga wrote for the Pussycat Dolls. He was a part of Nas Barkley. He had his mm. own solo hits. He was in Goody Mob. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Arms too short to fight with God. Though. Yeah, CeeLo Green got 20 of them. He'll get on your he'll get on from, he, from, he, from, from 20 different places. Places, too. yeah. He can his 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 he can take five, five, and five and give you a problem. Because fuck you was one of the biggest Man, albums when it came. He got out. That you couldn't go nowhere without that Melanie that. Fiona collabo. Like he got some crazy joints. I was looking at his track list the other day. Like, whoa, this nigga wrote that. He was a part of that. Like, oh my God, CeeLo. So that's why I because I got on him because I was thinking about Outcast the other day. Motherfuckers don't really want to see Outcast. You know what I'm saying? Fuji's Wu Tang, they don't want to see Outcast, bro. We just drink that shit. Nah. So um uh, uh real quick, yo, opinions on the upcoming battle. I think everybody is pretty much gonna have the same answer because I'm not excited about this, but we got TI versus that's yo real. Gotti. That's fake. Yeah, that's I heard it was real. fake. That's why I said beans oh, and is next. Yeah, that was yeah. Fake. Yeah, that's and that's a terrible. Remember, that was fake. That, that was, was yeah, that was a fake date and everything. Because I went to verses and looked that shit up hard. Oh wow! Because all that I shit, was really because at the BMF premiere, Ti was talking shit to Fifty again. Ti called Fifty out again last weekend at the he, BMF premiere. Yeah, the BMF world premiere red carpet on the red carpet. He called Fifty out to his face again. And Fifty just laughed and walked. And Fifty up. said no. No, but he, Buster said yes. Yes, and he still won't take. He still won't take the Buster bait. Well, see, this is the problem. See, I can beat fifty. I'd have already told you that. Yeah, he don't want to. He don't. He, wanna, he, he can't be Buster. Performance factor. The no, only person he, beating Puff, and I mean beating Buster in a performance is Puff. Yeah, he's not beating Buster. Once you get to the fact that one Buster gonna have to battle Buster, like Buster, Missy or somebody. The fact that Buster can do um uh his verses the way he did them in the studio alone is gonna blow the blow the crowd away. So you're going to lose them rounds, even if you got the better song. Just to hear Ver Bu uh, Buster rap as fast as he does without taking a breath. He's going to lose. These people are picking the, uh, the battle. I, I get it. You, you fixing the fight a little bit. Yeah, you, 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 you fixing you, the fight. You, I, I get it, but 
I put nah. Buster against Jay. Hmm? I put Buster against Jay. You put Buster against, against who? Jay? Jay Z? Yeah. yeah. All right, we want to get out of here, man. You wrapping up? <laughs> My producer that got sleepy in. That'd uh... be nice. That'd be that'd be nice. I would like to see it. It might be fun to watch, but That's it ain't gonna be no know, battle. Man. That ain't gonna be no battle. And what's the purpose of watching the verses? Then it's gotta be fun to watch. I want to see. Well, that's, that's why I was capping for JD and, and Puff because I was yeah, that's fun to watch. watch that's but under it's the fun same. To watch. <laughs> that, that, that. Yeah, just because I say I would like to see it, don't mean I think that it's gonna be like a formal oh, match. It'd be okay. a very enjoyable. I'll be very entertained. It'd be very entertaining. That shit would be fire. All those hits, all in one spot, nigga. Come on. Yeah, we definitely got to do uh do another one of these. For sure. And and well, I ain't gonna wait a whole year next time before I do it. Maybe we can get the uh, TZ back in for the next one. Yeah, we need TZ. That's all we missing. Yeah, mm -hmm. all we missing is TZ from this TZ for the next one too. from this building session right here. Uh, Weave, I appreciate you. Anytime I call or text, you know you always right there. So I appreciate you for coming through and. Uh, giving some insight, uh, scales. You ain't never been but a text away, you know, since you know me and you started chopping it up. So I appreciate both of y'all for stopping through. Let them know where they can um listen to your pod at. Yeah, for sure, man. You can find me on YouTube, Slick Talk with Scales TV. Please hit that subscribe button notification. We try and get that Leo Cohen money over there at YouTube. You hear me though, <laughs> baby? Also on Facebook, man. Hit, follow me at Slick Talk with Scales. Also at JR Scales. Also follow me on IG JR Scales HBK. I'm also back on Twitter too. That's just JR Scales. Also, every Tuesday and Thursday at six ish, six p.m. ish. <laughs> tune into the Slick Talk with Scales podcast for show. We yo, you can find me on Dad Demo at all platforms, man. Social media and all streaming platforms. Um, you know, just keep tabs on me. You know, I got new announcements coming up. Got a big project that I'm launching next year, and um, yeah, man, just excited to get back into the swing of things, man. Scales, hey, listen, first no. time. Collabing on on a pod, hey, this nah. is fun. Um, you know, much love, much respect. You know, it's it's dope. You know, just to kind of you know be able to chop it up with the people that you exchange this knowledge with back and forth. And we don't always we, agree. You know, what I'm no, saying? no, we no, we do it. We do it in characters. It's harder to type the numbers. It's better when we get the dialogue <laughs> like this. You know, know what I'm saying? It's hard to type the letters and numbers and shit. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's love, man. I appreciate you know you know everything no, that I'm, you're doing. I'm Zoom you know. capable too, so I will be in touch with you. You know what I'm saying? I just got put on to our Zoom capabilities around here about hey. two weeks ago. So I will be in touch with you because we got to do this, even if on my platform, yours or whatever. We absolutely, we long absolutely, over this, brother. Phone call away, Tori. You know, you know what it is, bro. We probably got one of the the, the greatest relationships that no one that no one has ever seen. So, um, stay pissing people off. Stay hitting me on the side, laughing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a, the, the, the funniest thing on earth because, again, people just like to argue, and I always provide the platform for that. You know, a lot of times. I do hit weave on the side laughing at y'all arguing in my comments because <laughs> I posted it to be funny. Like it gets the people going, man. The one where I said uh that Jay should have retired. You notice I never commented after I said that. I left and then I text Weave. Yeah, man. And I actually made him in on that one because he's like, I gotta delete my comment, dog. You did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, facts. But no, it's great, it's great having good people uh, around. Um damn weave, I wish you. Whenever you do stop back up, you know, we got to sit down at the studio, have a round table, you know, in person. Absolutely. I think I will be down there. I will be down there in May for sure. Cause my nephew graduates from high school. So mm -hmm. I will be now, down. I'll there. be back in November. So we'll, we'll line something up. Okay. I will Say be no down. more. Yep. Yeah. We got to get down to Houston or next time y'all do a MKE versus, you know, Texas <laughs> type thing, you know, Yo, see, here you go. Here you go. You're going to have both of my peoples hating me, but um, but yeah, man, skills. You get to the city, man. Holla at me, dog. No, no, I, I, I'm supposed to be sliding in ways, but I think it's after you'll be here. So, like I said, yeah. when you get here this next time, I'm yeah. not missing you. I missed you last time. You had some wedding shit going on, and yeah, I had a whole yeah. bunch of shit going on that weekend, and I didn't know you was coming. But now yeah. that I got a map on when you coming, when you touch, we gonna politic because I'll be your way late December, like right before Christmas. I'll okay. be in Texas in, in okay. your neck of the woods. So I already had you on my radar, homie. Say less. So. Say less. All right, we appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, check the podcast out wherever you stream your podcast. From me to you, make sure your next drink is a cold when we out. For sure. What up, the? Milwaukee's with a podcast. Mister Unpopular Opinion. Sorry. 
be handy. handy, handy. Okay, we all. Milwaukee's Realist Podcast. Podcast.